keep up with your favorite players and teams on the official HGC website for desktop and mobile. Stats, archived matches, and everything you need to stay up to date with the global Heroes of the Storm Esports League. Watch live on game days and upgrade your Heroes of the Storm knowledge. 2018 promises to be the best year yet. Look for expanded statistics, enhanced viewing experiences, and more on your home for the HGC. are preparing an assault against us. I need your help to defend this base. Here they come. Put on your big girl pants. Do not forget about the Archangel. It could vaporize us any moment. The site disruption pulse is almost ready. We've done it! The Zerg have gone! Ah, oh, I am so happy I could kiss every last one of you! Except you. You go over there.
Hello and welcome back to HGC North America where we are in the middle of the action here between LFM and Team Freedom. I am Dreadnought with me as always got to be the J How there. Man, it's a tough time here for LFM down two games of Team Freedom, three level leads, almost, you know, debatably four. It's weird caster math when it comes to that. We all kind of have our own ideas on is it the number, is it the exact experience in general though. It was it was, it was solid play here from Freedom. I think you can expect that, and I think, as you had said before we went to break, is you needed that from Team Freedom, and that's the biggest takeaway from that is that if you're going to remain amongst the elite, you started out 4-0, you dropped a few series, you kind of hit the middle of the road, you didn't have a great performance at the Clash when everybody dread, when we were there, all the other teams were like, dude, Team Freedom is the real deal. All yeah. the European teams were like, this is the real deal. This is the number one team. They dropped out 0-4. So coming back from that, they had a lot to kind of regain in terms of their stature. And obviously they're one and one so far, but getting through the bottom end, I guess, is the way to say, look, we're still here, compete with the rest when it comes time. We started this series with talking about some of the battleground priority and how they overlap between the two teams, like Infernal Shrines and Sky Temple. We got, you know, at least attention towards that of Infernal Shrines. As you see, that was banned out by LFM, but no selection yet onto Sky Temple. LFM. It's taking us to Volskaya Foundry. That surprises me a bit. Uh, I mean, it surprises me a lot. I straight up, <laughs> in my notes, I was just like, okay, so I can say 100% the first two maps here are going to be Inferno and Sky between these two teams, <laughs> right? Both of their maps overlap. Both of them enjoy the two battlegrounds. Now, LFM, I feel like this shows their fear, you know, kind of a, the circumstance, that mix-up we were hoping for. It's hopefully going to happen here with Volskaya Foundry. If they're going to change it up, I wonder if they'll have that high prioritization onto Ethereal. Obviously, they're in the second pick slot, so it's a little bit easier to second pick Ethereal as opposed to first pick Ethereal. Ethereal has the second lowest win rate of all first pick heroes. The lowest, Genji, sitting at 31.6. Ethereal sitting at 31.8. So those two heroes, when they're in the first pick rotation, have not had the most success when we look at the global impact. So we'll see if LFM can maybe get Tyrael in that second rotation where his success is over 50% in that rotation. I will say one area of the draft that absolutely is kind of detrimental here towards LFM, looking towards, uh, you know, not the only this week, but maybe the remainder of this entire phase has got to be the Medith. It's been 100% ban rate, depending, not even depending on the slot. It's just straight up, we don't play Medith at this point in time. Wait a minute. Are they going to risk it here? Stukov's been uh, a menace. Okay, so let me say this. Letting Medivh through in this situation, I don't feel like it is the mix-up that maybe they necessarily need. I, I mean, you know, Team Freedom Unless very comfortably probably can run this solidly. The impact that Medivh would have feels a little bit too, you know, high up there. But... Maybe with the Mount Fury in, that's enough for them to want to rid of all the main priority supports. It's a mix-up. So I, I think I can't blame it, but I just feel like it seems like it's a bold move. You've, and got, you've we, got to mix the Garrosh in here. If you want to get displacement, I feel the Garrosh has to be here. If you really want to make sure that they're going to struggle, maybe an early Junkrat. But the Mediv, there was zero hesitation on that pick. It literally didn't even make it to 59 I actually seconds. already wrote down Mediv. I'm going to have to go ahead and cross that out. <laughs> As the van, that's how predictable it typically is here from LFM. The mix-up, it's here, but it has to, you know, come with more than just a, hey, we shifted up the bands. Where else is that going to come in priority? I would expect this is where you, the Garrosh you were talking about, the threat in which that provides, maybe a junk rat. I don't know if it needs to come up this high in the draft, but, you know, you it can be expected to be looked at as a ban on the side of Team Freedom, if not, but a support. If they consider any one of the supports a tier above that of the Stukov Malfurion, now is the time and the place, ladies and gentlemen. I think they might potentially go back down that Ariel route. Just pick it up near the end. It's not that big of a deal. They get the Garrosh, and the, they, they, go, they double up to make sure that you deal with those portals. And Garrosh obviously has the toss. He can toss you away. Junkrat can put down the Concussion Mine to make sure and knock you away if you come through the portal. So, you know, we hypothesized on one or the other and where the priority lies. They highly prioritize both of them. Now that does give over if Freedom, on the other hand, feels like any of the supports outweigh the rest, though. They can have the option to move in that before the second ban phase. If they don't, though, you can kind of volunteer it through, wait it out. I, 
I, I don't know if I feel like if there is one, it's got to be Uther, and it would be before this ban phase, but I, it doesn't seem like North America has at least shown any kind of thought process that falls anywhere near my own. I wonder if we'll just get a Lucio. But if we do, I feel like that's got to be after the second ban phase. Like, you never oh, yes. want to commit that. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. If, if, if anything is picked before that second ban phase, it would only be the Uther. Otherwise, you you know, you wait it out. Hanzo stitches for Team Freedom. He Some, really wants to play today. Somebody's disappearing through a portal later. <laughs> Let me show you a magic trick. Ah, uh, yeah. Here you are, and here you aren't. It's a pretty quick, you know, uh, what we're talking about for anybody who hasn't gotten to experience the Gorge portal uh, play. It, the milk carton strategy, I think, is what it's been deemed. I really... Oh, man, I... I don't want to go down this route, but I think I'm going to go down this route when I talk about this. For LFM, Junkrat's going to be there. The last thing that you need to, to go into Medivh is burst damage because he gets healing off of that. Post level 7, everybody gets shielding and all that stuff later down the road. And it just makes it so hard. You can see a priority on supports there. I was going to say, if they want to go down a different route, you can see the Lucio is there. Heavily debating, if I'm them and I see Collusion on the other side and it's full sky, I'm taking Lucio away all day. I mean, I feel the same, but that's only because I would say having the Uther for myself is going to be a bigger power play. Especially considering the combo we were just talking about before. You need a burst support to be able to keep somebody alive through that if you have any chance. The only other hero who can keep somebody alive through it, but maybe can disable everything of the like enough, is in fact banned. And that's Stukov. What if we just get another support here and everybody's just like, look, four supports are banned. We still have Medivh, so we'll just go Lili. Bam! Are we actually going to see a Lili again? Not the game I would throw it out, <laughs> no. but maybe. After last week, I don't yeah, know anymore. Yeah, no, at this point, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Man, and now I'm wondering if even Uther is going to be the focus versus the Rhaegar and just go with the burst healing. Just because we've seen... Okay, so we've only seen one team, and it was only Tempo with ever a commitment of the Uther over the Lucio or the Rhaegar. With Garrosh, okay, so if you pick if you pick another Squishy, I feel like you have to argue into the Uther, but maybe there's too much spread damage to be too afraid of out of the Hanzo. The back line is set for freedom, so you don't have the same type of Genji aggression, so I wonder if they might just try and match back line with back line, because Medivh, Will be Yoda, Hanzo will be Lutano. Just a matter of where does Freedom go with their second melee? Because with this setup with Stitches, it's not like you're walking in to try and, and be aggressive. And that's where I think the support argument comes in, is is if they're squishy enough to need the Divine Shield versus the Ancestral Healing. Into a Stitches like an Arthas, I would go Ancestral. If it's Aeratul, you go Uther. It's way too squishy. Way too squishy to risk that Rhaegar. Ancestral timing. Does pretty much give, you know, either the option of a Lili or the yes, Rhaegar. We are actually having this conversation. Uh, we, we are. This on is, the regular this is This is a actual conversation that we have at HTC now is, oh, you know, they could Lili. I, I, I would almost argue for Kerazim here. Just because of how squishy and how burst oriented a majority of them are on the other side. And we've seen phenomenal play. And there's a there's a weird roundabout way that you could also go the I think the air ally for the reveal. Yeah. On I mean obviously you can see stealth much easier now, but if you want to be able to reveal to be able to auto attack, Medivh also has a reveal, so you just make it really hard for Zeratul to have those invades. I mean Hanzo. And Hanzo with the Sonic Already arrow. Oh makes yeah. It so hard. Oh yeah. I really hope it's not Lili. That's all I know. <laughs> Almost on cue, on cue. Like, could that have been timed any better? I mean, man. <laughs> Lili's out, boys. Mixed with the Tyrael, still here for freedom. This draft is down the rabbit hole for LFM. Uh, we talked about the mix-up. We see the priority into supports, but we have seen. I mean, it is far off here. With the adjustments, what is what is this? I'm going to assume is a backliner or an offlaner. I'm gonna guess it's a backliner with the Zeratul side soak, 
And if it is there at all with that side soak, which you can get away with with the composition on the side of Freedom, what squishy do you put with this, Jaina? I mean, you ideally want something with Wombo, but it has to deal with the Tyrael and the Sanctification threat. Ring, typically too predictable. There's Kel'Thas? I mean, there's I'm not going a lot wild. of synergy here. I mean, there's very few things. Hmm. Unless you just go super safe with Greyman. Hit me with that Kel'Thuzad. Just get a wild. Or you go with an offlane. What is it here, LFM? Offlane. That really doesn't change my opinion in any direction, really, for that matter. Still feels a bit out of place. It feels more out of place than the leader. It does, actually, which is surprising to say. <laughs> Man, that's... I, I've watched a lot of competitive heroes of the storm, but this is the first time I can say that Sonya is a weirder pick than Lili, in fact, was. I also think, I, I, so we've seen the fast feet talent at level one. I believe this is the patch, man, I, you talk about diving deep into like, oh, we don't really dive deep into Artanis too much. And then Lili did have a minor change on her level one with the, the serpent build to where when you put the Serpent on somebody, Heels. it casts a Blinding Wind. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it casts so, a Blinding Wind. Yeah. And it is a talented Blinding Wind. So if you spec into that later down the road, I don't know if you would against this composition, but I wonder if we might see a change up. Again, I, I need to double check. Probably shouldn't even talked about it. Just wait till we went to game and then looked it up, you know? But, but either he, way. he's exposed it. He's laid out. He's, he's trying to display he's honest with you guys, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is Jay How, uh, Jay How, the honest man. Uh, Jay know, Honest. Yeah, Jay Honest. I don't know. We've got game three here with LFM up against Freedom. Again, at match point between these two teams. A bit of a... I'm just going to leave this as a uh, an opportunity to be surprised with the composition that we see out of LFM. Collusion's thinking about his level one talent. With the Lili. We're also seeing Uther and Sonya, but I, I doubt we're gonna see any kind of deviance from what we typically get from either one of them. We do land on, you know, Eager Adventurer for Lili. I don't know if you remember last Sunday, but uh, Lili took us on some adventures with Simplicity. Yeah, she did, man. <laughs> Quite a few, actually. Good displacement. You know, we see Nazmus on the Tyrell again, so after seeing Zugrug play 10 games of Tyrael throughout this season, Dread, it looks like they're changing things up a bit here. And maybe it's just a matter of because that second tank that they're picking, but Nazmus obviously showing his flexibility. Wow. And the, bo body, the body block. Blocks. Oh my. Oh, Zugrug! No and the Lili <laughs> heal comes in. Oh, that was so pretty by LFM. That was one of those, oh, yeah, but the Medivh, you know, Force of Will comes in, and then you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that, that synergy on that body block, so great. Man, that, that's got to feel bad. Nasmus so close. has no Eldruin. Not going to land the, you know, I don't know why I ever second guess. When, <laughs> when Medivh is in the game, they're, in fact, safe until proven otherwise, not the other way around here. I mean, I think you're right, though. I mean, we do have changes to the Mediv portal. We don't have the same type of uh, uh, talents at 1 and 13. You used to have the quickening and then the portal duration. Uh, quickening used to be at level 1. Uh, obviously, you got to be a little bit more timely. And Collusion under assault here. This might be the first blood. It's enough to get the first blood there for LFM. When Drayde coming down, joining the squad, great initiation coming out from them. Good timing on the blind, too, to try and keep the Lili alive. It was right after, you know, what you typically would expect for the opener of there between Zeratul and Sonya. But Sonya is one of the, you know, she was... When auto attack damage was the main source of damage for a majority of the backliners in the meta long, long ago, uh, she was one of the few great ones just because she does do auto attack damage, yes, but a lot of what she makes happen comes still through that spell. And she's one of the better kind of proportion of like, hey, I have auto attack damage, but it wasn't all of it. Granted, with the new Sonya, some of the new changes is probably catering heavier towards the spell side than we see out of the auto attack side. But it's something to keep in mind when looking at, you know, what kind of relevance does Lili have when it comes to saving and defending beyond just, I mean, having a new and improved version of Cleanse compared to most supports, which is a, you know, I would say the biggest reason for some of the acceptance and relevance of her. 
I'm, I'm really trying to figure out. Okay, so it started with, we have Zeratul. We've seen a lot of VP, especially since uh, a lot of the changes. We used to see Might of the Nerezim when more into the auto attack build was relevant. Now we see a lot of Cleave build. And so it's just kind of going back to VP a little bit in terms of the few games that we've had on Zeratul. But then I'm thinking, like, what could you combo with that? And obviously you've got the Garrosh taunt and everything. Uh, Lili Jugs need to be interrupted. Is there any chance we might be going full leap here for, for Sonya to try and get on that Lili? I, once we saw the Sonya, that was in my head the only way you could justify the pick, that you void leap combo. That being said, it's not like that's going to help anything. Sonya's leap, hold up here, Sonya gets pulled back in. Sonya's leap after a void is great initiation if there's another damage source for a one shot. Rip tire is not that damage source, right. and it's the only one available on the squad. So I would say no, just because you you have to essentially use the void to deal with the sanctification if you go into leap at all. You have to get synced, then you go for a leap, then you go for the kill. If you use the void and the sync or and the leap together, you're just going to get a synced after, and then you look real silly because then it's the two for one heroic trade off versus the one versus one. But the synergy and kind of demand that the response out of the Zeratul to enforce that to get that sanctification in isolation makes it to where it seems like go with wrath, play the safer route. But it does feel like. Yeah, with how kind of out of place that Sonya was and us asking, is this a backliner? Is it going to be a side laner? Maybe we'll get that from them. If we do end up seeing that, I would have seen, I'm guessing the shot of Fury is seven uh, and more commitment towards that. But without that, going standard build here, I'm going to assume Wrath. Got to get that poison spear damage, amp it up there at level 10. Also, one thing to consider with, uh, you know, kind of Lili and Jugs is uh, Void Prison doesn't even cancel it. It just stalls it. Pauses it, it just yeah. pauses it. So it's one of those moments where if you don't end up getting the kill under the kill target, Jugs actually does a great job of single target healing onto one person if it's all focusing on only to one person. It's pretty fast and pretty effective. And uh, genuinely, or normally, when you look at that out of the void, she's just going to be able to, okay, this target's low. All of the cups go on to one target, and it's a pretty safe save, especially with cleanse picked up at seven. We've seen the back and forth on the control point here. LFM controlled it for quite a while, getting up to 92%, but Team Freedom has reclaimed that control as we see LFM drop back, grab their turret. Junkrat cleared the camp up at the top. Look for LFM to reapproach this control point, see if they might be able to get that combo. As you see, the turret was put down, still holding onto a second one there for Figgy. The swabs goes in, puts a bit of damage onto Lutano. Yeah, it's going to be important, though, that he does that with people near him in the future because they can't just get those trades. They need to get kills with those trades. Big E taking a lot of damage, but Deep Portal is going to allow Zugrug to get out, but it's enough for freedom to claim a kill for their own. Now, one to one, 97% on the control point. Picked up completely now here for Team Freedom. See what they can make happen here with this first protector. Dread, I believe we were talking about Hanzo builds this morning. Yeah. And I, I think this is the one you you kind of lean towards a little bit with yeah. Hanzo. Uh, I would say just in general, because Scattering Arrow is uh, an amazing ability, but it's territorial dependent, right? Like on how many situations can you actually get initiative or value out of it? And this one not only provides more uh, kill potential and kind of generic value to every situation in every map, but it also provides wave clear in any circumstance too. You don't need a wall near you whatsoever to be able to get that with any of the four, just throw out the storm bolt, hit the minions, get the explosion, even a bit of control on things like you were talking about Infernal Shrines. We've seen this kind of come to popularity. It's definitely into a Garrosh for the armor shred at level one, but I personally just feel like this build in general is more often than not going to gain value. Nice attempt on the cleanse there from aware, a half second too late. I wonder if it might have still been there enough for the gorge. I mean, it was close. It was close. I, it, as you said, it was a little bit late in terms of dodging the hook, but I wonder if it was there enough for him to get that one step away. Also, we see Junkrat. I believe that is the extra movement speed when you are depleted of grenade, so also gives you that a uh, quick little step to get out of danger. It's one of my favorite talents on him, but it becomes kind of counterintuitive with the 16, because if you get the 16, and then <laughs> you get the CDR on your grenades, and then you have three hit, you have near 100% uptime on your nades, because constantly cycling between your auto attacks, so it hits a point where you go, wait a minute, you know, I, I, I'm not really getting too much out of this, other than, you know, getting the replenish. Nice void hold, hold up here after that isolation. Nasmus on an island goes ahead and uses the Tyrael Saints. Portal again. Dragon Arrow comes in. Flip away. Zugrug now man on the point. Drated. Tossing him back. Swabs versus the one versus one against Nasmus. Ends up getting the kite out. A lot of damage here. Oh, oh wow. Drated's still going. Drated 
gets out of there. Again, he is on the Garrosh this game, so this seems to be a thing that when the, the Garrosh player is draided, but that was a big time play. He got the toss into multiple members of Freedom, followed up by the Groundbreaker, then hit the taunt. If they had any type of different follow-up, that could have been detrimental to the health bars of Team Freedom. Yeah, that's one of those moments where, you know, Draded, it, it wasn't so much the play of Draded, as much as, as Draded's clearly going, boys, I got the play. <laughs> the rest of LFM's kind of going, are we sure we can do this? <laughs> and for sure, I thought it'd be enough to be able to get him caught out there, but no, able to keep himself alive for now. Those concussion mines by T, especially on that point, have really done a number on Team Freedom's control. I think that's it's kind of the biggest point. You know, we saw the poly bomb just a, a half second too late, but timely blink out on the initial part of that because there was the uh, gorge portal over the wall there, but unfortunately it was on Zeratul. He's got a little bit of mobility. With the 13 talent here closing in for freedom, it's up to LFM to force a fight before that point if they have any intent to. Figgy is going to get dismounted there. For anybody at home wanting to stitch his notes, why does Zug Rug open with slam over hook opportunity there? Just get the dismount, number one. Increases the chances of making sure you get that hook. Number two, I mean, it uh, just being able to, uh, I mean, mainly just not burn that hook cooldown while they're mounted up, I guess is essentially the same point. But well, really what I'm trying to say here is don't throw your hook out for <laughs> no reason. Open up with that W. Get the slow opportunities, too. If you get to the later stages of the game, we aren't there yet. Post 16, obviously, that slow is pretty significant. It's huge. Yeah. It used to be a stun, so I mean. <laughs> well, we saw the taunt used there by Garrosh. Unfortunately, Yoda had already kind of just eked through that portal. So a little bit of a missed opportunity there for LFM, but heads up play by Yoda to dodge that. Short enough cooldown that should be up for this next team fight. Level 13 almost here by LFM, picked up by Team Freedom already. This control point will be up at the top. And, you know, that earlier work that Free Freedom was able to accomplish took down that well on the side of LFM, which is normally one of the things you want to do with that first protector. And they were able to accomplish a lot of that. So that gives them a little bit more control over this top area without that well for LFM to drop back and tap to. Now that the 13's here for Junkrat, I thought we might see maybe T split pushing, but instead going to join up towards this fight. There goes a hook gorge combo on the wrong side of this wall. is going to be Figgy trying to break it out of Swaz, but it's not enough in time. Polybomb ends up getting value. Dragon Arrow not going to land. Portal is there. Zugrug comes through. There's the toss. Where comes the hook? There it connects. Indomitable use. 1036. Another hook's available for Zugrug. We'll see if he ends up landing that one. It looks like LFM is going to concede, and with this Team Freedom, they're going to follow a little bit. I'm, they're going to get the well, or excuse me, the Bionic Emitter, a.k.a. Helium Pulse here. Uh, you know, they had an opportunity, I think, to maybe push in just a little bit in that top lane, go ahead and open it up, but instead they're making a little bit of a safe play here. As we saw, LFM did rotate back up with four members, obviously. It's definitely still strong. Drated not going double up at... At 13, instead, getting the shield when he does land his Groundbreaker. Swabs eating so much damage in the turret, almost gets the takedown. Yeah, great job there. Rip is going to come in. LFM keeping Draded alive. Divine Shield, Sanctification, everybody invulnerable, trying to keep themselves alive. But the Polybomb splitting out Swabs on that Sonya. There comes out the Void from Swabs, but it might be too little too late. Nice Force of Will onto Zugrug. Ends up keeping the team alive one for one here. LFM keep themselves alive in that skirmish. That was very, very close. They needed that. I mean, just any semblance of regaining control in this game, or at least some attempt to gain any control at all. You know, they tra that trade there gives them a little bit of experience, gives them a little bit of opportunity. Uh, T, uh, you can spell. You can't spell Arthalon without T E A. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> You, in fact, you know, thank you for that spelling lesson here, Jay Hal. You're welcome. I, uh, I didn't know if we would be able to, you know, make it here through this, but now that I know that, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be a better Junkrat player. Just put a bunch of concussion mines down. It's fine. Yeah, th I mean, that really is the name of the game there. Normally, uh, I didn't think he would get the second one off because I thought the Medib may be in position enough to make sure to get the set off there to where he doesn't get the solo value out of that 13. Not the case, though. Yoda unable to track it down. Yoda joining this protector. Look at that damage. The cleanse comes out. Not the reason he's alive and not the reason he's no longer alive here. Very good job. Protector gets a kill. Gorge on to Swabs. 
Nice bait there from Yoda. There goes the Vorpal in. Swab's actually getting a kill. Just barely misses the hook there, but still a two-for-one trade in favor. Let's see, Swab's, he does Love go fully invisible. But if you walk into him... Found him. Oh. When you walk into them, you get... Oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not like this. He's still looking. Keep scouting, Nazmus. No! Oh! <laughs> no! no! Swabs! You had one job! <laughs> He's got wormhole. Come on, there we he go! No! <laughs> what? Swabs! <laughs> Swabs! <laughs> no! You had one job! It was so close, Swabs! If you did, just didn't give up, man! I'm pretty sure that if you run into an invisible hero, it you does. get the red reveal above your own head. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know about that necessarily, but I will say there was definitely moments there where you could argue that he maybe should have been revealed. Either way, <laughs> Swabs, almost with a story as great as the Arthalon save of last week, doesn't make it out. Not as victorious here, but he did buy a lot of time. Like, I mean, let's be real here. There was no <laughs> sieging done during that time, or less, less so, as two members trying to kite back and get the kill onto him. I mean. I want to know, like, Nazmus' thought process, because clearly he couldn't find him, he couldn't find him, and then he goes, searches literally everywhere except for the one spot, and then he reveals himself at the end. Do you think he's like... Why? He's this, like, yeah, I thought I thought he made it back already. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is surprising. At least I don't look silly now, because uh, we found him. Freedom still in pretty solid control of this game, though. Beyond, you know, the epic chase there of the Zeratul trying to find that, and kind of the, you know, what I'm going to call a small blooper reel. <laughs> They're still in full control. They are going to be rounding the 20 pretty, you know, fast compared to that of LFM with that full level and a half lead. I, you know, I'll be honest, my time frame is a little bit off after that escapade we have with swaps. <laughs> but I do think it's going to be likely as that next map objective spawns when we get control point C. That's going to be... I mean, with the bottom four already down, likely a keep coming out from them. Maybe even core if they can get themselves a couple of kills. LFM, what are they going to do to try and force the hand of freedom? Right now, it seems like pressure bottom. Drated's still anchoring. Let's see if he makes his way down. Nobody's pathing near him just yet, but LFM has actually done a good job to get some of those turrets down. Gives him a decent chunk of experience, but speaking of chunk, the slam goes out, the portal as well as the gorge. Zugrug has got himself the swabs, and he's got himself one dead Zeratul. Yeah, Zeratul going down. Drated, flipping out Nazmus. Eldruin follow up number two. Portal's there. Riptire even killed before, but big taunt immediately after the attempt to punish from Ooh. LFM. Figgy now seems to be the focus. Another groundbreaker here from Drated. Eldruin's follow up, even throw down Jugs out of Team Freedom. Gets interrupted. Another interrupt. Just how long can Drated hold off here? Figgy goes back with an Ancient Spear. Drated wanted to go back in for the heal, and Lutano's like, no, 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 I'm going to go the other way. And then he, uh, he gets the takedown there. But, you know, that the taunt and the concussion mine kind of threw me off there, Dread, because Sonya went in. I thought that was an opportunity that, that we might see Figgy get some damage and maybe, maybe get a kill there, but the concussion mine just kind of separated everybody. Yeah, just kind of all over the place and able to recover or find those kills. One of those moments, too, where a Medivh generally, you know, whenever you force a team to scatter into a Medivh, it's good because it might force a bad portal. Uh, but, you know, and you aren't getting that portal to advance left or right, but it does make it to where, you know, he's one of those heroes who does great with kind of split up skirmishes because force of will and portal are so impactful. Here's that 20 we were talking about over the bottom lane. And now it, it's it, it's unlikely that we're going to see off them. It, it really is honestly near impossible for them to get the 20 at least until the keep front wall is being attended, probably the keep too. It's unlikely to get in that time frame. Defending on the core, possibly so. They just can't stagger the deaths in the defense of this protector. Even if the protector goes down post keep, Freedom is holding on to three turrets and the biotic emitter. Oh yeah. And so you and can Saint put you yeah, and say yeah, you can put all you can put your turrets down and they'll because the Structures prioritize items and minions and mercs before heroes. So if you put down the turret, you can soak up keep shots. You can soak up some of the, the core damage. But as healthy as this protector is, I don't even know if it's going to be needed. This is a hook. Wow, Zeratul getting one shot there. Not even going to connect. No void now for 50. Figgy able to get the Ancient Spear out. Drated 
trying to get the escape here from Team Freedom. No hook up yet for Zugrug, as it was, again, kind of missed over that first one. Protector now, as the keep is going to fall, moves on towards the core here. LFM with the last stand against Team Freedom on Volskaya Foundry. Can they make it happen? Shielding on the core, already going to be removed. Taunt lands on to Medivh, but he's going to take the portal out the other way. Shielding 60, 50, and with everybody on Team Freedom standing, it looks like this is going to be their series to take. Three to zero. Team Freedom comes out looking strong against LFM. And LFM, man, is it too soon to just be like, I don't understand their drafts the entire series? If you're preparing for Freedom, you can say that one of the best things to do is to just try and fight them. It reminds me a little bit of maybe Ballistics before and MVP Black, now KSV Black, were like, what if we just fought you, right? Like, you can't macro if I'm in your face. And that was kind of one of the things, obviously, a very different comparison. But I feel like teams that are very heavily macro-focused that have struggled in team fights, you might want to draft something a bit more aggressive. We saw Zeratul Sonya, which in your mind sounds that it's aggressive, but in terms of, like, how it plays, the synergy, especially with the Junkrat, it doesn't feel aggressive. Yeah, like, uh... That's why I was, especially with that, once we see the Zeratul picked up, I was saying I'm more likely to see a backliner in that type of situation. Not only because the laning situation, you'd be likely to get away with it, but side laners and how they synergize with Zeratul is the answer is most of the time they just don't. You, you know, when you have that Zeratul, you want those kind of Li Mings, those uh, Genjis, other high mobility, high all in reset compositions, and you just go, can we get this one reset? The answer is no, void. Maybe we can find it during this time, and then really kind of open up those fights. Unable to find it there for LFM, but Team Freedom, you know, they're still... I, I feel like they weren't challenged that much. Honestly, I was hoping to see a couple answers, with, like, especially with a, you know, if we see LFM draft to Team Fight, bring the Team Fight to Team Freedom, would we see Team Freedom maybe kind of suffer? But it was very much Freedom got a lot of what they wanted, didn't mix anything up that much, and really just kind of went the, hey, we're going to play our slow, steady, you know, well-thought-out yeah. game. It's one of those moments where... I have a hard time being like, you know, I, I wanted to see that much more from Freedom because they were so dominant. But at the same time, it goes like, again, how like how hard you win and how dominant you win is something I'm always looking for. And especially the confidence they should have up against Freedom. I don't know. I, I'm still kind of back and forth on my evaluation if I got what I wanted or not. I think you took the words right out of my mouth. It's just I'm not sure where I stand yet either. I mean, if you're looking at it on paper, you expect Team Freedom to come in and get the victory over LFM. They did just that. So, I mean, they didn't have to show a lot. They did exactly what they needed. They got the Medivh in the last game, just, you know, fine-tuning things. Obviously, you know, letting Medivh through, scary thing here in North America. But, you know, Team Freedom did what they needed to do, did what they expected to do. And it doesn't matter how you win, I guess, if you get a 3-0. But, obviously, you know, we always want more from some of our top teams. But Team Freedom, it's, it's, it's hard to argue like oh you know we want more but how much more do you want guys like we just 3 0 and we hadn't did it pretty easy you know what we we don't we can just ask them ourselves hey. lucky enough we got team freedom on the line so we're just gonna you know what from our end we're sitting here kind of mix you know wishy-washy on feeling the confidence level and the dominance that we want to see from you guys how how are you guys feeling after that victory over lfm uh I mean, we can't really ask for much more than a 3-0, like, especially that Spider Queen game, we were, like, really dominant in it, so I think it, like, really boosts our confidence after losing a series last week. So, uh, you know, coming into this, I guess, did you have this kind of expectation with the results against them, Zugrug, like, or were you maybe feeling, I, I guess, did you have different interpretation or expectations from LFM? Because I guess I felt like they would be at least packing a punch in game number one a little bit harder than they had. What is it from your guys' view? Uh, LFM last week looked pretty good. Like, they've improved a lot since the start of the season, I think. But I think we're just a much better team. So we were expecting a 3-0. Just, you know, confidence and that's it. Short <laughs> and sweet. Just we, we are the better yeah. team and we acted on it. Yeah, I pretty much. Understandably so. You know, with the kind of repertoire and expertise you guys are in, I'm going to send you over to Jay Howe here. Zagrug, one of the things that I look at with your team, and it's something that I was able to talk to Lutano about, and what you guys mentioned last week as well, dealing with aggressive teams and aggressive compositions. And for me, it seemed like you guys maybe needed a double warrior front line to deal with some of that because you have such a strong back line. Today, we saw Tyrael being played by Nasmus as you shifted over. Is that just a situational thing this weekend? Is that something a little bit different? Because you've been the primary Tyrael player for this team. Mm, I think usually when we draft Tyrael, I'm on it, but we do run comps where Nazmus plays a Tyrael. I'd say it's about like 70-30% who plays a Tyrael, but usually it's me on it. 
And then is that just that's normal for you? Because I don't actually have any Tyrael games logged. I mean, obviously, historically, you guys go back the front line of you guys. Do you feel that there needed to be a change at all? And do you feel that you were tested at all in this series against LFM? Mm, I think that our drafts this series were like really, really strong. Like Arthas is a hero we don't play a lot, but it was really good against them on BOE. So that's what shifted like Nasmus on Deterial just because we drafted another warrior that we don't really draft that often. Fair enough. Well, you guys definitely performed admirably and uh, took it home. Easy 3-0. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh. You know, you brought up the Arthas and some of the, I guess, a less common warrior pickup here. Uh, one that's been showing up a little bit in Europe, and I got to ask, you know, from your point of view, is the Stitches. Uh, is that going to be one that we see popping up ready to play more in North America, or is that just going to be the Team Freedom Classic? Or, in fact, it was kind of more of a one-off situation here. Well, right now, I don't think Stitches is that good against a lot of the meta heroes or, like, the meta tanks. Like, Garrosh and Diablo are, are both really good against Stitches, so... There's not a lot of situations where we want to pick him, but if there's like a meta shift, like more focus around tanks, I think, then we'll see more stitches for sure. Hopefully we end up getting more stitches over from you guys. And uh, before, you know, I, I we actually want to take a look towards the games that you have up uh, next weekend up against Heroes Hearth Esports. I mean, feeling like from the dominance that you guys showed today and the confidence that you got, it's probably feeling equally as confident towards Heroes Hearth. But, you know, with their performance, are, are you feeling any different? Mm, I'm confident going into the series, but I think it'll be close, like a 3-2 or 3-1 for us. All right. Well, thank you very much here, Azug Rug. And, uh, you know, the floor is yours for any shout-outs, any thanks, anything alike that you want to give out? Uh, shout-out to all of our fans. Shout-out to our sponsors, Team Freedom and HyperX. And shout-out to Twitch Chat. And shout-out to Jeeves for all the tips he's been giving me. Thank you very much, Zug Rug. And congratulations once again on the win. Man, you know, shout out to the to the fact that every one of our pro players, or whenever one of our pro players, shout out Twitch Chat. I just, you know, I, on the inside, I just smile a little bit. You know, just shout out to Twitch. Why don't we shout out Twitch Chat? Mm. Shout out to Twitch Chat for being part of it. Has, did I did I do it? I mean, I mean, I guess so. You know, I we don't keep the memes <laughs> flowing as well as maybe some of our pro players here. But that is going to be the end of our very first series of the day for HTC North America. But we've got another one up for you guys. Stay tuned. It is Gale Force up against No Tomorrow. He dodges. No, not able to dodge the Howling Blast. But look at that Dragon Zero after the dash. And